At noon, we got number 20, Oklahoma State, who's 3-1. and one. Showing number 23, Kansas State, who's 3-1. and one. Kansas State favorite by 5 on ESPN. And it's an elimination game, baby. Two one-loss squads going at it. First of the week, really. We got Alan Bowman, who's 91-145, thrown for 1,173 yards. 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. Ollie Gordon, the seconds, had 73 carries for 258 yards and 4 touchdowns. And Jazan Stribling had 20 catches for 345 yards and 2 touchdowns. Avery Johnson's gone 58 and 95, thrown for 620 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions. DJ Giddens had 68 carries for 417 yards and a touchdown. Jace Brown had 13 catches for 199 yards. Oklahoma State is 43 and 27 all time against Kansas State. Last game did go to Oklahoma State in 2023, and they have won four of the last five times he's played. Four and one for Oklahoma State under Chris Kleiman, uh, against Chris Kleiman. So like whenever Chris Kleiman took over Kansas State, he's one and four against Oklahoma State. He does not beat Oklahoma State that much. Um, These are two teams that I don't think expected to be in this position in this week, right? I think you could have told Oklahoma State fans they wouldn't have been throttled they lost to Utah. I think they would have been throttled with how they lost to Utah, which is how Utah dominated them, really. I mean, it looks, the final score looks close, but it wasn't for the vast majority of that football game. So, it's just like, I don't know what happened with Oklahoma State. Utah did such a great job of defending them for three quarters. They could do nothing. So much so that they benched Bowman at half. They went to a different guy. He was ineffective. They put back in Bowman and he was able to do things, but like it was already out of hand at that point. That was a bad game for Oklahoma State. Now, I think Kansas State fans would have been shocked if you told them they would be 3-1 and one in this game. Um, I kind of saw it coming. Again, I picked BYU in that game last week, but going to BYU was always going to be a tough game, right? BYU was 5-7 and seven last year, but they were really good before their starting quarterback got hurt. Um, and they, they were playing really good football up until that point. And I think it was it was foreseeable that they could have won that game. I didn't see it happening like the way it did. BYU dominated Kansas State in Provo. It wasn't close. And I think both these teams need a big bounce back win. Because, again, you lose two games in the Big 12, that might be your season. You might not be able to make the Big 12 championship with the two lost com- two conference losses. In this conference, with these many competitive football teams, I don't know if you can handle starting the season 0-2 in conference play. I just don't know if you survive that. Um, so both these teams need this win desperately. Um, I think it's really... I think Kansas State gets a bounce-back game. Again, I thought... BYU was a trap game because, again, it was sandwiched in between two big games, a ranked Arizona team at home and a ranked Oklahoma State team at home, right? So it was sandwiched in between the two, going to BYU. It was a trap game. It was a look-ahead game. It was a lot of things for Kansas State. I think Kansas State is still a good football team. I still think they're the second-best football team probably in the Big 12 this year. Um, I like Kansas State to defend home turf, and I like Kansas State to win and cover at home and eliminate Oklahoma State.